Slides, more formally known as glissando, serve two main functions. Firstly, they allow for a smoother, connected movement between different neck and scale positions. And secondly, they offer a form of ornamentation or embellishment of our phrases. As an addition to other legato techniques, such as string bending, hammer-ons, and pull-offs. In short, slides are a very effective way of injecting feeling and sophistication into our phrases. Even if the only scales you're intimately familiar with are minor and major pentatonic, slides can help you to feel your way around them in a more expressive way. The last part provided a summary of the core sliding techniques. In this lesson, we're going to look more closely at how slides can interact with scales, including our spatial awareness of their positions across the neck, and how we approach the phrases we form around them. Here, we have the B minor and relative D major pentatonic scale mapped out. When learning this pattern, we typically break it up into five overlapping positions or boxes. The next step is to develop an ability to move between the positions, so we can connect different areas of the neck more freely and fluidly. Slides are one approach we can use for this. We're going to start by isolating the third string. As well as the box patterns, we should learn how scales form across single strings like this, and be comfortable forming simple phrases across one string. For example, here we're using a third finger and first finger slide as part of a phrase. Similar thing moving up the neck. This time we slide into a bend. Finally, descending back down the neck. A similar thing on the second string. What this simple exercise does is not only get us physically comfortable with moving through different neck positions using slides, but it also trains us to visualize target notes and bend points, for example, across a more horizontal span of these positions. Next, we can work on adjacent string pairings in a similar way, for example, starting with the third and fourth strings. Now the second and third strings. Continue adding strings to the sequence of positions, gradually combining vertical and horizontal movements in our phrases. What we're doing with this process is allowing ourselves more space to feel our way across the neck, with slides being one effective means of getting from one tone and position to another. Of course, pentatonics can be seen as a kind of skeleton of the fuller seven-tone or heptatonic scales. For example, B natural minor or its relative D major in this case. But we can in fact use any tone, either flat or sharp of a scale tone, to quickly slide into an accent note, a type of ornamentation known as a grace note. Here we've isolated a position around which we could form simple phrases, such as the following. Yeah. 
Let's now try adding in some sliding grace notes to give it some ornamentation. The tones in orange here are known as chromatic tones, that is, they lie outside of the implied key signature. Another name for these tones is non-diatonic. We can use these tones as starting positions to create quick slides into the more restful diatonic tones. For example, here we're embellishing the previous sequence with some of these chromatic grace notes. So there's a very subtle effect there, but by using these chromatic grace notes, instantly we've injected more life into what was dynamically a rather flat sequence, and we can ultimately say more with less. Become aware of how these chromatic tones exist within and around different positions. Now, there's a diatonic tone that isn't included in the pentatonic scale we've been using so far. That sounds particularly nice, both as a sliding target and as a grace note itself. It can be thought of as the second in relation to the minor key tonic, or the major seventh in relation to the major key tonic. Now we've added this to the pattern, similar to before, let's try using it as a target tone for a chromatic slide from just below it. Another way we can involve this tone is by positioning our pentatonic scale in a related position to the key's tonic. For example, in the relative keys of B minor and D major, we could also play F sharp minor pentatonic, which can also be seen as its relative A major pentatonic. All we're doing is positioning the pentatonic scale on the fifth of the key's tonic, whether minor or major. Whichever pentatonic scale we use, the sliding concepts we've looked at, including chromatic approach, can be applied in exactly the same way. Another form of sliding ornamentation we can use involves holding a resting accent note as usual, but then quickly sliding up to an adjacent tone in the scale. Or we can do a similar thing sliding down to an adjacent tone. Typically, we'd lift off the fret as soon as the slide is complete. <laughs> We can also do what is known as an accent repeat by sliding away from and immediately back to the accent note. These kinds of ornamental slides get us closer to the qualities associated with vocal dynamics, thereby creating a more organic expression of our phrases. Once you're confident with using slides in different playing situations, try combining them seamlessly with other techniques, such as string bending, hammer-ons, and pull-offs. Hopefully, this lesson has made you more conscious of how slides are available to us at any given moment, whether as a means of more freely and smoothly connecting scale positions, or as a way of ornamenting and embellishing existing phrases to give them more expression and feeling. Eventually, their use will become more intuitive than calculated. For more help with this concept and others, please consider joining my Patreon, where you can also get access to exclusive courses and get the chance to vote on what you want to see next. Thank you so much for your time and support. Cheers. Mm -hmm.